Hello and welcome back to Financial Madness where we look at all things personal finance. In today's video we will focus on the NHS pensions ill health retirement to understand what happens to your NHS pension when you become severely ill. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness helping you be better with your money. Ill health retirement is an aspect of the NHS pension scheme designed to allow members to retire and receive their pension benefits before reaching their normal retirement age if their health prevents them from continuing to work. The normal pension age is the earliest age you can access your NHS pension without penalty and this age differs depending on the type of NHS pension scheme you are enrolled in. In the 1995 scheme the normal pension age is 60. 2008 scheme is 65 and the 2015 scheme follows the state pension age which, depending on when you were born, is between 66 and 68. So the ill health retirement aspect of the NHS pension is to offer access to your pension before your normal pension age to those whose physical and or mental health conditions significantly impact their ability to work in the healthcare sector. Individuals must meet a certain eligibility criteria to qualify for ill health retirement in the NHS pension scheme. These include 1. Years of service. You must have been a member of the pension scheme for at least 2 years. And number 2 is that you have not reached your normal pension age. Only if an individual satisfies these two bits of criteria, then they continue to meet the other requirements before being granted ill health retirement. And the third one is medical evidence. Applicants must provide medical evidence supporting their claim that their health condition is severe enough to warrant retirement. And number four is health assessment. An occupational health assessment is often required to determine the impact of your health condition on an individual's ability to carry out their NHS duties. And this will be carried out by the NHS. The medical advisors may also request additional medical evidence if it is considered relevant. For those who are active members or still under NHS employment, you will be provided access to occupational health services so you can obtain the health assessment at no extra cost. If you are a deferred member of the scheme, you do not have access to the same resources and you will be responsible for obtaining any fees acquired. Oh, and there's one final criteria and that is um, subscribe to this channel. There are typically two types of ill health retirement within the NHS pension scheme. You have tier one and tier two, and the tier you receive will be decided by medical advisors during your assessment. So the first one is tier one, and this is for individuals who have health conditions that prevent them from doing their current NHS role due to permanent ill health. And then you have tier two, and this is for individuals who also meet the criteria of tier one, but they are also unable to carry out any regular employment outside of the NHS due to their ill health. So those are the two tiers of ill health retirement, but there is also something called serious ill health. And this is for cases when your ill health is terminal and your life expectancy is less than a year. Now that we understand the three types, let's understand what this means for your pension. Before we go into the calculations, let's imagine an individual is aged 45 and currently has benefits worth £15,000 a year from their NHS pension after working there for 25 years. We will use this example to demonstrate what it means for each of the scenarios I'm about to go through. Starting with tier one, which is for cases when your health prevents you from doing your current NHS role. For all schemes, which are the 95, 2008 and 2015 schemes, the entitlement is the same. And that is you get your current pension benefits early with no reduction nor any enhancements. So in our example, our NHS employee will receive £15,000 per year from their pension benefits now at the age of 45, so before their normal pension age. And this will come with no penalty for the early payout. Moving on to tier two, which means the individual also meets the tier one requirements, but is also unable to carry out employment outside of the NHS too. The entitlements for this slightly differ between schemes, so let's break it down one by one. For the 1995 scheme, you get the tier one benefits plus an enhancement of two thirds of your prospective membership to your normal pension age. Let's go back to our example to make sense of this. So what this means is that they will be entitled to get £15,000 per year, which they earn from their 25 years of employment, plus the benefit equivalent if they did work for another 10 years on top of that. For the 2008 scheme, this works out to be the same principle. The individual will get their tier one benefits plus two thirds of their prospective membership to 65, which is the normal pension age in this scheme. Going back to our example again, they will obtain the £15,000 which they earn from their 25 years of service, plus the benefit that is equivalent if they did work for another 13 years. 
For the 2015 scheme, again, this is very similar. They will get their tier one benefits plus one half of their prospective membership to the normal pension age. Let's say it's 68 in this case. In our example, they will obtain 15,000 pounds, which they earned from 25 years of service, plus the benefit that is equivalent if they did work for another 11 and a half years on top. And lastly, we have serious ill health, which is for cases where the individual is not expected to live longer than a year. In these cases, regardless of your scheme, you can apply to exchange all of your ill health benefits for a one-off and normally tax-free lump sum payment. So in our example, the individual can exchange their £15,000 a year pension benefits for a one-time lump sum. Now this number is going to be vastly different to your annual benefits. If you want to have an idea of what this number is, my educated guess is that it will be very close to your hypothetical annuity cost, and this can be found on your total reward statement. Check out this video here if you want to learn more. So those are the ill health retirement options explained. Now let's go through some of the key points to consider. Number one is the application process. To kickstart the ill health retirement process for those who are active members, you would need to speak to your employer's HR or pension department, who will provide you with an AW33E form to complete. If you are a deferred member, you will have to complete an AW240 form. Links to all these forms are in the description box down below. The other thing to consider is the way you find out the outcome of your application, and that is your medical advisor will contact you and provide an explanation of their decision, including the reason for giving or not giving you ill health retirement. And you will be provided with an option to complete reassessment within three years. The third thing to consider is tiers. So it is important to note that even once you are on ill health retirement, it may be possible to move between tiers. You may be recommended by your medical advisor to have your conditions reassessed within three years. And finally, number four, going back to work. Even after claiming ill health benefits, you may have the option to return to NHS employment or employment anywhere else. The impact this will have will vary depending on when you left the scheme, when you claimed your pension benefits and the type of benefits you claimed. When you do want to return to work, you will have to inform the NHS of your intention to do so. And as a consequence, your pension benefits may be reduced to take into account the fact that you've already claimed some of your benefits earlier on. This is known as abatement. If you do rejoin the NHS, you may be eligible to rejoin the 2015 pension scheme if you wish and build your benefits further. Cool, so that is it for this week's video. If you do want to learn more information on ill health retirement, I'll put a link to the NHS retirement guide in the description box down below. And also, if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments section. And also remember to like and subscribe. Bye. Pow.